Holy crap, I just realized how great this game's jump scares are. I dare say that this game, in Five Nights at Freddy's of all things, has invented a perfect jump scare. Tactical nuke ready for launch. Not the perfect jump scare because that's subjective, but a perfect jump scare. To see what I mean, let's take a quick recap of all the good scares in the Five Nights at Freddy's games. It won't take long. But before we do that, if you enjoy the analyses of horror games, I'd really appreciate you hitting that subscribe button to help me with my New Year's resolution to grow the channel. With that out of the way, let's start with the first game and figure out which game has the perfect jump scare and why. FNAF 1 is only limited by your understanding of the game's mechanics. Once you get how the animatronics work, it's very difficult for them to catch you off guard and scare you. And while that is the case for a lot of horror games, FNAF 1 especially really suffers in this regard. <laughs> The second game has a leg up on the first with Foxy. Even if you think you've flashed him enough with your light, he'll catch you by surprise to end the game. The problem is that there's no sense of fear involved with it, so it comes off as a, kind of a cheap death scare. <laughs> Ultimate Custom Night in general isn't meant to be scary, so I just kind of skip it. Central Location has a great atmosphere, but the game is so easy that jump scares for the most part kind of fall flat. Fun Top Foxy is probably your best bet for scares, but you'll probably get desensitized to that particular part, and it's also not the whole game, just one part of a night. FNAF 3 has pretty much nothing, Foxy's alright, but he's not even as good as FNAF 2 Foxy, so moving on. Pizzeria Simulator is pretty good. The lack of constant information or warning really makes these scares truly come out of nowhere. I'd say there's kind of a lack of player input though to like link the gameplay and jump scares together. Oftentimes you'll make a mistake and not even know it, which detracts from the fear. And results. Help Wanted actually flipped the script a little bit by being scarier without the scares. So the scares are actually not the scary part, it's the scenarios that are so terrifying and well made. But since we're talking about the scares, I gotta move on. Security Breach is alright, but the scares are forewarned too much and they're way too quiet. Five Nights at Freddy's 4, the quote unquote final chapter. <laughs> we were stupid. This is it. Now don't get me wrong, not all the scares are bangers. Many of them make your screen blink a few times before a quick fade that then leads into the jump scare. So there's a bit too many forewarnings for those. But let's look at the door scares from Bonnie and Chica. These are perfect. Let me tell you why. Negative reaction to incorrect player input, which links the scares to the gameplay. Check. Instant with no warning. Check. Actually loud. Check. But let's go even further, it's not just that the jump scare is loud. Have you ever wondered why this game's jump scares always seemed a little louder than the other games? I'll give you a second to think. I'm just kidding, I won't do that. The game makes you turn the volume up, because you have to listen for the breathing. The game makes you turn the volume up, even if you don't necessarily want to, to beat the game. Genius! Even Alien Isolation has the motion tracker, you don't need audio. I haven't even brought up the fact that it's even better when you press a button thinking it's correct with full confidence only to- Let's look at the final process. You go to the door. You have to decide whether to close the door or use the flashlight. Pick wrong, you die. Your actions matter, and if you die, it's your fault. This keeps the scares from feeling super random or cheap, kind of like Pizzeria Simulator feels sometimes, all because of direct player input. Now to listen for the breathing. You wait about two to three seconds. You hear nothing. Time to hit the light. <sighs> nothing. <sighs> all right, check Foxy, Freddy, move to the other door, repeat the process. You listen. You think you heard something. Shut the door. Hold it for a few seconds. You hear some footsteps. Open the door and... It works so well, that loop. This is the only game I don't look forward to replaying because I know it's going to get me. You might be wondering why punishing your moves works better here than in other games. Usually it's because your adversary is too well telegraphed. When you hear the music blaring and the loud grunting of your enemies in Outlast, it gets you mentally prepared for it. And that 4 just boom, jumps you right then and there. Your mistakes are punished in an instant, creating the perfect jump scare. There's a reason that Markiplier's first jump scare to this game has been memed to death, outside of the irony. Okay, so the first night is never usually that bad in any of the games, so I'll play through- If he wasn't punished properly for running back and forth, that could have ended way differently. To be honest, I think this is one of the best jump scares I've seen in gaming. It's not scripted, it doesn't warn you even though it's not random, it's loud, it's just great, it's the game. It's the perfect loop. Now to cap things off, fun with plush trap. Bruh, this mode is just a troll, I swear. Same philosophy as the door scares, either know exactly what you're doing or risk an instant scare. Your fault, loud, volume requirement, I love it. The perfect mini game to let your relatives play on your phone. If you know of any other games that have jump scares of this quality, please 
please tell me. I want to play it so bad. That's my take on the perfect FNAF jump scare. Let me know what you're thinking about the game in the comments below. And again, I'd really appreciate if you hit the subscribe button for more Final Fantasy Freddy's and horror. Thanks so much for watching. Yeet.